and welcome on board for it is the third day today we are moving on with uh, the chapter 1 and uh, uh, today the topic is 1.4 and um, uh, we are going to talk about the relationship and differences between portfolio program and project management and also how do they relate together in organizational project management if you remember i did make a little mention while i was talking about various certifications that portfolio management program management and project management are the foundational standards and put them all together and this is called organizational project management so we will cover program management portfolio management then we'll talk about projects and strategic planning and lastly a very interesting topic project management office probably all of you must be aware about what a pmo is first let me talk little about opm that is organizational project management this is a strategy execution framework why does it call it a strategy execution framework because we did discuss that to bring organizational change and to realign the organization to a new direction organization at strategic level needs to have a framework or a mechanism through which those changes can be brought in and those changes are necessary to evolve the organization to the next level as i said earlier standard operating procedures are not enough they can be good enough for running the existing system but evolving the system to the new heights is due to the strategy we set the vision we have for the organization so this is the strategy execution framework which actually brings about that change and that is done through opm organizational project management it is not only project management but there are other areas like program and portfolio which are senior to project management and they play their role so project management program management and portfolio management are definite candidates to be part of this execution framework but there is a fourth thing as well which actually works as a glue to put them all together and these are the organizational enabling practices which are provided by the organization to put it all together we'll talk about what these organizational enabling practices are but these are integral part of this framework and without their presence we could not have binded project program and portfolio management disciplines into this framework and why do you want opm to exist as if we have a consistent and predictable way to deliver the organizational strategy we want better performance we want better results we want a sustainable competitive advantage we want organization to evolve to the next level we want to compete against our competitors and we want to gain an edge over them so if you want to move on to the next level if you want to perform better if you want to produce better results and sustain in this ever changing world then probably we need to have this kind of a strategy execution framework we know about projects but it is not only projects that are prime movers for change there are other elements like programs and portfolios which i will introduce you in a while but only in mature organizations project management is governed by programs and portfolio management a normal organization may have project management but they may not have any clue what program and portfolio management is and how projects are to be managed under programs or portfolios 
then we have organizational strategies and organizational priorities what is to be done what changes we want to bring about and we also have an organization strategic plan which we are trying to follow and we are bringing this change according to some plan it is not out of the blue so this is a well planned effort we are steering the organization we are steering it into the new direction we are facing we also need to do some organizational planning and that organizational planning impacts projects by means of this project prioritization why are we talking about the prioritization because there could be a number of change initiatives which could have been taken up but all those initiatives are not taken up simultaneously we have many ideas to do certain projects but all those ideas are not implemented all together but we analyze all those ideas prioritize them according to the need of importance and benefit they will bring to the organization and based on that prioritization we will start specific projects now you would learn it later that this project prioritization is a function of portfolio management then we need to direct funding and support for these those projects which are more important more beneficial to us we have to look at their risk categories which are the most risky projects are less risky projects we may have to prioritize them accordingly which projects are supporting specific lines of business and what are the various general types of projects we have so keeping those points in focus we will be able to analyze our projects more appropriately and probably will be able to prioritize them and select the right project at the right time so this is something we are talking beyond projects we are talking about portfolios we are talking about programs so it is not only the projects which bring the change but there is a system over projects which makes the project happen project prioritization is is a strategic work which is not performed by project itself but somebody decides the fate of the project who are those systems are management styles these are the programs and the portfolios portfolio program and project management are all aligned with are driven by the organizational strategy the same organizational strategy which is sitting right on top all the operations of the organization are also aligned with this organizational strategy and all the projects programs and portfolios being conducted conducted in this organization are all aligned with this organizational strategy are they are also driven by this organizational strategy this is the engine this is the engine which is keeping us on track towards the desired direction the organization wants to take the, this is not only one strategy these are a set of strategies set of organizational strategies and ultimately they would satisfy the organizational objective they differ in the way each contribute to the achievement of strategic goals so portfolio also focuses its efforts to the uh, to the achievement of organizational objectives or strategies but there might be different strategic objectives which portfolio is pursuing program has got a different view and a different mechanism to fulfill organizational strategies and projects have their own way. so they may differ in the way they contribute to the achievement of the strategic goals now let us look at how do they align as i just said they all align with the organizational strategies how do they align as far as portfolio is concerned portfolio management aligns with the organizational strategy by selecting the right programs and projects 
prioritizing that work and providing needed resources. Number one, you will learn from here that programs are under the portfolio. Projects are also under the portfolio. So the selection of the projects and programs is the responsibility of the portfolio manager. So there could be many program or project ideas. Portfolio manage management is responsible for selecting them, but not before they have all been properly sorted out, rightly prioritized. So they are being prioritized, which is more important to the organization financially and otherwise. And when a project has been selected or a program has been selected, the needed resources have to be provided and that is again the responsibility of the portfolio management. Portfolio management does not deal with uh, minor, minor resources, but it is responsible for providing the strategic resources. Those resources which we do not have in abundance, they have to be distributed to the projects and programs we are starting. And we do not want to give those resources to those projects or programs which are not really that important. So prioritization plays a very important role. Not only it allows us to select the right projects and programs, but it also allows us to provide the needed resources to the most important projects and programs. By this, you might have understood that projects and programs both come under portfolio, but so far, we are considering programs and projects uh, as two separate entities. Let us see what is program management aligned to. Naturally, it is also aligned to certain organizational strategies. Program management harmonizes its projects and program components and controls interdependencies in order to realize specified benefits. Now, there are very important things in this sentence. Harmonizing its projects. That essentially means that a program is composed of a number of projects. So program is a level above the project. So these number of projects have to be coordinated by the program so it harmonizes its projects. And also program components. What are these program components? We understand there can be more than one projects in a program, but what are these program components? Are there something else? I'll, I'll come to that. And what does it do? And it controls interdependencies. That means that these projects and whatever program components, it, it means to say, projects and program components are interdependent on each other. And program manager management controls their interdependencies. So you must understand that program management program is not a simple collection of diverse projects. They have to be related. They have to have some relationship. They have to be interdependent. There has to exist some kind of interdependencies in these projects and program components, which will be controlled by the program management. And why? Why, why it needs to control these interdependencies? As if it realizes specified benefits. So the focus of a program is to realize some benefits. So we need to understand this term benefit realization. This is something different from what we normally talk in a project. In project, we generally do not talk about benefit realization. Program actually aligns with the strategy of the organization for the realization of certain benefits. And to realize those benefits, it starts 
a number of projects which are interrelated and interconnected and they are so harmonized or orchestrated as if they can realize the expected benefits. To meet the organizational strategy. This is what the program management does and how it aligns with the organizational strategy. Coming over the project management, we already know the definition of project management and we do understand that in a project we deliver some product service or result and project has got its own objective which is aligned with the organizational strategy. So project manager management develops and implements plans to achieve a specific scope that is driven by the objectives of the program or portfolio it is subjected to and ultimately to the organizational strategy. Now here I must clarify a project can exist independent of portfolios and programs. A project could be a part of a program and a project can be directly answering to portfolio. So project could be independent, it could be part of a program or part of a portfolio. So it develops and implements plans to achieve specific scope and what is a specific scope if it is an independent project the specific scope is to deliver the deliverable which it is assigned to be doing assigned to be delivering but if it is under a program or a portfolio then it is driven by the objectives of the programs or portfolio but remember program does not deliver deliverables what does a program deliver? Program delivers benefits. It realizes benefits. So programs are not focused on deliverables. So whatever the deliverable a project is delivering would actually be adding to the realization of the benefits under a program. If this project is under the program, the deliverable of the project would be adding to the realization of the specific benefit of the program and ultimately to the organizational strategy and if it is portfolio then naturally it is aligned through portfolio with the organizational strategy. If we look at it as a whole picture whole organizational project management how does it align? OPM, how does, does it align with the strategic objective of the organization or the strategic goals? OPM advances organizational capability. How does it advance organizational capability? That means the capability of the organization to perform due to the change OPM is going to bring, it will revolutionize the organization's output. The capability of the organization will be greatly advanced or enhanced. And how is it done? It is done by proper linking of the projects, programs and portfolio management principles with organizational enablers to support strategic goals. So this enhancement we are trying to bring, this can only be done by linking the three disciplines project management program management and portfolio management and gluing it together through organizational enablers as if to support those strategic objectives or goals an organization measures its capabilities now an organization has to check where they stand how good they are now after having this capability gain where they do they stand then plans and implements improvements once they have assessed their current value they will they will develop plans for improvements and that has to be a systematic practice which will ultimately 
take the organization to the next level, ultimately achieving the best practices. This is where we start talking about best practices. The standards, the standard of project, project management, the standard for program management, standard for portfolio management, they all are giving us the good practices. But putting them all together and achieving further levels of excellence while taking our organization to the next level, this is where the best practices come into play. This is the game of excellence we are playing with best practices. If it is a game of survival, standards are enough for us and we only apply good practices in project management, in program management, in portfolio management separately. Putting it all together, it forms OPM and OPM supports or advances the organizational capability. So, but are these organizational enablers? Let us have a look at them as well. There are four things. The structural practices, how your organization is structured. In what kind of organizational structure do your organization does exist? Is it supportive of running projects, programs and portfolios or it is resistant to projects, programs and portfolios? So, if you have got a good structure, which is, which is causing convenience, which is facilitating the existence of, existence of projects, programs and portfolios, then it, it works as a glue. Otherwise, it will become a hurdle. What are your cultural practices? Your organization, what is the culture of the organization? If the culture of the organization is also facilitating is also supportive of how the projects programs and portfolios should run basically uh, an organization normally an operational organization would like to maintain status quo but a developing organization which really understands where they want to be they will amend their culture, they will evolve their culture to the level where they accept change. So if the culture practices are such that they accept change, they welcome change, the existence of project programs and portfolios would be much appreciated and facilitated. What are the technological practices in the organization? Are we backward? Are are we technically advanced? I hope you can understand. If we are technolo technol technologically advanced, then these practices are going to support us enormously in achieving the change-oriented target of project programs and portfolios. Human resource, are they ready for the change? Are they supportive? So, you see, this is the maturity of the organization which is basically supported by these four factors, four practices, structural, cultural, technological and human resource practices. They can cause hurdles or they can greatly facilitate the benefits we can achieve from OPM, Organizational Project Management. How are they structured? Portfolio naturally is at the top. Portfolio can have projects under it portfolio can have di directly have projects under itself or it can have programs under it itself program could be answering to the portfolio or it can have a sub portfolio or a lower level portfolio working under the higher higher level portfolio there could be a main portfolio of the organization and there could be a sub portfolio of the organization the main portfolio okay let me uh, check if you have caught everything so far then i'll proceed ahead uh, how much do you need? keep moving
Dimovin, you want to say something? No, sir, please not proceed. Thank you. Okay, Atul. Can I ask a question? Atul? Atif, is it all right with you so far? Yes, sir. So far, so good. Okay. Uh, don't you have any questions, queries? Because I have talked about things which uh, may be revolting for some. Uh, uh, no, sir. It's fine. Okay. okay. I believe actually we are into the same stream. So first, uh, let's have I mean all the details of like now you're into portfolio. So probably I have questions later. Right. Okay. Adris, anything from you? G. Adris, why? Everything is fine, sir. Everything is understandable. Wonderful. Shayad, something from your side. Um, no, sir, it's okay. Just a small uh, uh, update. Uh, you know, the ideal or the generic pers uh, perspective of uh, uh, portfolio or program is that, you know, a subset of projects uh, are, you know, the uh, program management consists of number of mul or multiple projects. Similarly, the portfolio has uh, a number of programs. But uh, there is some new information for me. I mean, uh, that you know within a portfolio management you know you can uh, execute a kind of uh, a critical organizational or a critical uh, strategic project that can be directly run under the portfolio management exactly. or you can say the key project or you know not a normal or a regular project it could, it could be a key project uh, which will be directly executing under the portfolio management um, okay why don't you look at it this way that there could be projects, no, it's not exactly the strategic project, it there could be projects which are independent of program or portfolio. Such projects which are, which are directly linked with any of the strategies of the organization and they are not related to any project or uh, any program or portfolio, they would be called independent projects and there do exist such like projects. All the projects cannot be placed only under the programs. So those projects which are not part of any program are independent projects and portfolio can manage those projects directly. Okay, before that, let me first uh, ask you, ask you all, what do you understand a portfolio is? How many portfolios should be there in an organization? Ji, Vasif, can you help me with that? Portfolio is actually, uh, you can say, uh, like in general term, like collection of business units. Collection so of? In one, your business units actually. Business units, okay. In general term. In, in general term. Okay. So on, the, on the face of it, you can have portfolio within a portfolio you can have more than one portfolio as well mm -hmm. if you are uh, distinguishing on the basis of the industry or the type or okay. make whatever you are looking for it. wonderful wonderful okay even if your organization is not aware of what a portfolio is and your organization is running a number of projects which is not properly organized under a portfolio or under a program. Let us assume you do not have any program, any awareness about a program or a project uh, or a portfolio, but you have got a number of projects running in your organization. If somebody asks what is currently running, what is, what is this, uh, how many projects are running currently in your organization, who should answer that? The top executive will actually be addressing all the projects running in the organization as a portfolio. 
it may not have a portfolio manager it may not have a structure at all but this is the current portfolio of the organization current project portfolio i would say current project portfolio of the organization and at at any point in time organization will have a portfolio some projects will be running at that time although i do agree that these projects are currently being managed separately and there is no central control and there is no coordination and communication between these projects that is okay but still whether it is managed or not managed i would call it that organization's project portfolio so portfolios do exist whether you like it or you don't but an organization which has got a number of projects and they are you know uncontrollable you need to put someone on top to have a look at what these projects and programs are there for are they really required are they getting the required resources should there be a need for a new project or should an existing project be killed so for that purpose the organization will set up a portfolio and some people from senior management will man the portfolio office and they will be responsible for identifying all such projects which should be useful for the organization prioritizing these and starting those projects and ultimately providing them the necessary resources to do their work if a if a number of projects are already running this portfolio management system would look at which projects are doing well doing well not in the sense of performance in the sense of achieving the strategic objectives of the organizations which are most important projects from strategic point of view for the organization which are most beneficial for the organization they would be prioritized high and any project which is not coming up to the desired level of investment and profits may even be decided to be voted out by the portfolio portfolio can kill a project at any time by naturally giving the due reason and it can even start a new project if it feels fit feasible that it is going to be ben more beneficial than an existing project it can also uh, this is this i was giving an example if there are all the projects running in an organization and we need to have someone to manage that to control that for the whole organization that would be a project portfolio but there could be programs under a portfolio and projects independent projects also if we talk about a program a program will have its own projects under the program but independent projects could also exist so if i say all the projects and programs of the organization are under the central portfolio of that organization but again if there are a lot many projects and programs running and it is difficult for for the portfolio manager to manage all the all the projects and programs single handedly then probably portfolio manager will decide to break the portfolio into number of specialties i'm sorry idris i didn't see it can you can speak now uh sir i have question here i mean this portfolio usually this type of management is uh, from client side or from the contractor side also I means uh, because normally on government sector they have many projects running on the side so we can say that okay on the top they have one portfolio manager and they would be had uh, means looking after all the projects right. whether same concept applicable to the contractor also means because contractor means this type of ambiguity is there in my mind I mean you are you are very right because yes of course uh, the concept of portfolio program and project applies to everyone but naturally 
it would be visible in very large organizations. You have given a very good example of a government uh, setup. A government setup is a very large setup. And therefore, it is apparently visible to see portfolios, programs, and projects running in there. But in small contractors, you might not be able to easily see where the portfolio is and who is managing the portfolio. Rather, portfolio does not exist as such as an entity, but a contractor is managing a number of projects. Say he is managing 25 projects. So there, there will, there is a need for a portfolio for that even that contractor also. But because he is unaware and he is too small for that purpose, he doesn't understand how it can benefit. So he does not have a portfolio, a central portfolio to look after the interest of all the projects to prioritize them and all that. So portfolio will exist in every kind of organization. Wherever there is project management, there can be program management, there can be portfolio management. It is everywhere. But if you are, um, you want to understand the concept correctly, then look at a very large organization or government office and you will easily understand what a portfolio is, what a program is and what a project is. Did I answer your question? Yes, sir. But uh, I have one question here more. Means, as you said, for the contractors, like there is a small contractor who is, uh, means, uh, who is doing like five or ten projects also there. Right. So they have one, means this contractor, he has one general manager who is sitting at the top, top means who has to decide all the things. Uh -huh. So he could be, he could be the portfolio manager for this type of projects? Of course, of course. For a very small organization, that's a person sitting on top. He takes on the responsibility for the portfolio management. He even does not, may not call himself a portfolio manager, but he is looking after the whole portfolio. Okay. No, no, I got it. Thank you very much. Most welcome. Most welcome. <coughs> okay. So I was talking about an organization who, which has hundreds of projects and programs running and it is a very large organization it's it feels that it does not it cannot handle all the projects and programs in a single large portfolio so what they decide is this decide to segregate the portfolio into sub portfolios based on some categorization maybe this categorization could be geographic in nature Maybe, you know, in Pakistan, there is a big company running hundreds of projects and it says North, Northern portfolio and Southern portfolio. So they could create, divide their functions, their projects and programs into two divisions, just like Sui has done. Sui, is the, there is one Sui Northern and one Sui Southern. Basically, it is one company, but it has divided its portfolio and the separate portfolio managers are looking after both portfolio, each portfolio. It could be like, you know, you can segregate the IT project portfolio as a separate portfolio, construction portfolio as a separate portfolio, and you can have as many number of portfolios under the main portfolio. So the load on the highest level portfolio will be greatly reduced and naturally every small lower level portfolio will have a specialized man management on their projects and programs for example the it person uh, it expert can be sitting on top of the it portfolio and he is looking at only the it projects you can give him a, a, a resource pool of all it items it resources and he can feed all his projects and programs from that resource pool. I can give a different kind of resource pool to the construction portfolio and the construction top person portfolio manager would be looking after those resources and the programs and projects under him. So this is very much possible that a portfolio can be divided into sub portfolios, but whether it is done that way or not, the portfolios do have programs and portfolio may also have independent projects and it is not something 
only strategic in nature that strategic project would be under it there could be a number of projects there which could not be placed under any program they cannot be forming part of any program but yes there are projects running directly under strategy serving certain strategic purpose <clears throat> now if you look at programs programs will consist of a number of projects but at the same time programs can also be complex so you may decide to subdivide your program into sub programs and in that case every sub program will have its own projects it this whole thing which has happened under the higher level portfolio could even have happened under the lower level portfolio a uh, sub portfolio can have a program which can have a sub program which can have a project and independent projects as well and to top it everything up every project could also be subdivided into sub projects so this is the whole framework uh, are we okay with it yes sir okay okay so if we are comfortable with the concept how the projects program portfolios are ordered under each other one thing i must clarify uh, okay movin what do you want to say well sir i had a question mm -hmm. uh, if i would say that describe a, a portfolio or the highest level of portfolio of an organization in just under three lines or four lines what can we say uh, very simply put all the projects and programs of the organization is the organization project portfolio Yes, all like on the list of all the projects that the organization is handling at the moment yeah. can be called the portfolio of the organization. Current, the, all the current projects and programs, current program, you can't take the historical project. Not, not the discontinued or because in that way the company will be hiding the projects they have, they were not able to complete. No, no, no. They are not included in the portfolio. No, they, why not? They, everything has to be in the portfolio. If there is only one portfolio, top level portfolio, everything, all the projects and all the programs running under the organization right now are the organization portfolio. All right, all right, that's better. That's better. Thank you. Wonderful. And uh, Shahid. Uh, yes, sir. I just want to ask you. Uh, let's say we have a scenario in which uh, we have. Uh, 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 one high level portfolio further classified into a lower level portfolio, let's say the IT department. Mm. So can we further uh, distribute the lower level portfolio into uh, uh, like active portfolio or a kind of a discretionary role or advisory role so that you know we can classify our projects based on those roles? Uh, okay. If you increase the level uh, levels of portfolio you can do it but this is always uh, complication when you are you know having a top level portfolio then sub level portfolio then sub sub level portfolio uh, that can be possible but remember as you increase the levels you increase the complexity in the organization you are not resolving the problem you are increasing the problem so i would go against it Okay, like sir, in our scenario, uh, in our uh, healthcare sector scenario, uh, we have different business departments and uh, one of the department is uh, ICT, where the PMO office is responsible for collecting all information from relevant uh, portfolio offices and the PMO office directly works with, uh, with CEO. So each department has uh, one portfolio. You know, uh, the directors of each department is considered as the portfolio manager okay. itself. Now, okay. they have further classified uh, some projects are critical in nature, some pro projects are, you know, a kind of advisory role or uh, different roles. So this is the classification we have uh, in our organization. Uh, 
okay some are discretionary so this is the model so i mean i'm trying to re reconcile you know the standard that are we following the pmi standards uh, as far as uh, uh, the setup is concerned okay number one uh, the thing which you people are calling portfolio is these are not the project portfolios these are the uh, you know kind of the general term used for various departments so every department head holds a portfolio that means holds certain responsibilities so that portfolio is not traditionally a project portfolio but in other ways it could be called a portfolio maybe from the financial point of view maybe from the responsibility point of view they may be calling it a portfolio so uh, if a department head wants to manage his projects and programs he can create a portfolio under him but this classification which you you have just told this classification is kind of a metric you are trying to develop a matrix out of these a project could be discrete and it could be under a sub portfolio so what do you say is it part of both and uh, no sir it's not both it's uh, uh... it's uh, 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 I'm, I'm 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 talking purely projects uh, you know it's uh, i can understand that you know the other meaning with as far as the financial term is concerned yeah. or could be marketing but you know i'm talking about pure it projects uh, okay. with where we have further classification okay and uh, uh, mean? i mean they are segregated in, in the nature as well okay you mean to say that every sub portfolio has the the, the subclassification of discrete and all that every portfolio have the same classification it depends on on nature of project you know each department has different nature of projects the okay. operation or the civil department has different kind of projects the it has different kind of project the safety okay. has different kind of projects right so you mean to say that every sub portfolio manager has his own classification under his portfolio? yes 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 okay and he wants to call that his sub portfolio no uh, he himself is the you can say he himself is the highest level portfolio where he has two three lower level of portfolios okay. each lower level portfolio is considered as uh, one is the advisory role because you know we have different categories or the types of portfolio so okay. usually two to three categories are there for each uh, lower level portfolios mm -hmm. and uh, each high level portfolio is responsible to give feedback to the pmo office which is directly working with ceo okay i would say that uh, yes of course this this uh, this is possible if it is such a large organization and they want to have a just a, a cursory P portfolio at the top level which is just collecting the reports and nothing else it is just reporting to the strategy and the more power the delegation has been given to the lower level portfolios which they actually exactly use. exactly it is portfolios which is the direct execution team the direct operational team or or the or the, or the team who's directly working on the project active right, project right right so yes of course this could be possible but naturally one once we discuss further more things would be clarified yeah 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 so so ji wasif so my question is Uh, the portfolio is actually related to the prioritization mm -hmm. of the projects. Right. We can only prioritize things or the projects once they are through to the planning process group. Is it so? Um. Okay. The portfolio is supposed to carry a uh, great power. This is directly under the strategy. The steering committee of the organization. has kind of delegated almost its powers to the portfolio and portfolio can decide the fate of the programs and projects under it but naturally it may have to seek permission before giving some surgical order but it does have its own powers okay 
Okay. So if there are no more questions, I'll move ahead. You see, we did talk about the levels of portfolios. And as it was discussed uh, with Shahid that uh, there are there could be more than these two levels of portfolios. Uh, but naturally, it is not really advisable to go very deep because going deep will make the things a little bit more complex. Then we have got programs and program if complex can have sub programs, when you have projects, projects if complex they can even be subdivided into sub projects. Then projects will have phases and phases could even be uh, divided into sub phases and so on and so forth. This all depends. The largest type of organization in the world could handle it in some way. Even NASA can, can follow the similar kind of structure. So you can go as deep as is comfortable to you. But I would suggest do not ever go more than three levels deep. Top level, middle level and the bottom level for any one of these things. Portfolios, do not divide them into portfolio, sub-portfolio, sub-sub-portfolio and do not go any further than that because that would be killing. Similarly, in programs, you go to sub-program level. If there is a need, you can go to sub-sub-program level and this formula is good for all level, levels, for projects, for phases, for everything. Okay, so what does a portfolio do? Alignment we have already seen. A portfolio, as we have generally talked about, is a collection of projects or programs. It could it could exist anywhere. It could exist at the top level. It could exist at the department level. It could exist at the sub-portfolio level, wherever it exists. All the projects and programs under its domain are within this portfolio. And this is not only the projects or programs. It also includes other work. Now, what is this other work? You see, you have a budget for every project. You have a budget for every program. What, uh, you know, um, who is going to coordinate whatever is coming out of these projects and programs and who is going to co uh, inter communicate with these projects and programs? Portfolio may need to have its own structure. Portfolio is kind of a permanent